Good morning, everybody. Let's try and get this camera level. Is it level? Me again. Got some 2050, that'll do. I think found it in the lockup. 2050 mineral motor oil, so that will do. I've tipped a bit in there so I can pour it in. Apparently, you have to prime these up, I think. Stand back. Stand back, could go everywhere. Oh, this is nice and thick stuff, this is. Oh. Right. It came to the top and it's going down now, so does that mean it's coming out somewhere else? So, no oil is coming out anywhere else, which is really surprising. I thought it'd come out of that spindle, but obviously, I suppose it has to be pumped into there, does it? I don't know. That, well, actually, it's good news, isn't it? I can get a bit more in there, I think. Seems to go down quite slowly. I've got to get the cap in there as well, so I don't want to overflow it. I think that'll be enough. Still going down. I wonder if it's filling up the uh, the next chamber where the spindle is. is right, okay, so we've got um, fibre washer, stainless washer, and then the nut, which I've polished. There we go. I still might have to um, paint around this edge again, because is this the right way? Yeah. Just steady let, steadily let that um, O-ring sit in there. I did put a bit of rubber lubricant around it, just to, but it didn't feel like there's anything on it. But it's just a shine. I just put a shine on it so it doesn't snag. Yeah, I think I'll have to touch that up where I smudged it. No problem. I've got the, we've got the paint. Oh, I think that'll do. So that's that bit. Ah, oh, yes, we've got some oil coming out now, just creeping down there. So that's coming out of the spindle. Okay, that's all right. Don't mind that. Just don't want it going all over the place. I'm going to put this on some paper towel now and just keep my eye on it. Right, I'll take these um, clips off because I had them on to stop the... Stop the shims disappearing, which I didn't want to happen. And the washers, got some washers on these ones, these slave cogs. That's tightened up, up um, fully. I know we've got to be careful here because we've got to do this, uh, we've got to watch that worm gear. Right, that's doing something, so I think we're all right. Nice and, nice and free, and it's on. So obviously that's meshed with that uh, oil pump spindle. What I've got here, among everything else, is a little pattern board, which I did. This is, this, this is my picture of the um, thing. Timing cover. And I've got all the old fixings here, although there's nothing wrong with them. It just shows me where the long ones go and where the short ones go. Do you know that the manual's useless? Absolutely useless. You might as well just chuck it. I bought another manual and it's exactly the same. It's just got a different cover on it. I don't think there's ever been a decent manual. I don't know. Tell me if you know a bit better. Right, according to this, uh, the parts section, the parts book is brilliant. I mean, you can go by that. Right, so typically I haven't got the right size washers, brass, copper washers rather. Um, I've got the right size fibre ones. So I'm going to have to put an order in. I'm not going to put the old ones in. Um, well, I could. I'd have to anneal them and everything and then, you know, it'd be a pain. And they look awful, you know, the second hand sort of thing. We're doing second hand here. So I'm just going to put a bit of lubrication around this. This is the main feed, isn't it? Through the crank crankshaft, that's the oil passway there. There's a little hole down the bottom there, so you've got to make sure that uh, you don't block anything up. Uh, yes, excuse me, because I, I went without you, I'm afraid. I, I, I just plodded on and got the bits stuck on. So um, 
I've got the rubber to put on the Kickstarter there. Um, the shifter rubber's on, of course. Um, got that casing on, looking very nice. Um, I put the bolts, let me obviously I've got this, uh, hang on. There we go. So we've got, um, I'll do this where I can see the screen as well. So the, um, they're on temporarily. I haven't tightened them up or anything, the uh, rocker covers. And we've got uh, the engine steady on there, nicely polished stainless steel, that. And the, um, can't remember the name of them, but they're on. <laughs> and we've got to make the pipe, of course, for the return feed pipe. And uh, that's on with its little wobbly nut, little bobbled nut. And we've got the gearbox cover on. Looking rather nice. Next, um, I need to go back and re-centralise the um, alternator around the rotor on the left-hand side of the bike. Because I did buy the proper shim that they, they sell at uh, Hitchcock, so I thought I would uh, try that. So um, I'm going to try that. And it seems to be a bit thinner than the card I was using before. So I'm going to verify with this. So I'm going to have a bit of a mess about. I've also got these um, gearbox mounts to put on, which I might actually do in a minute, because that's a two minute job. It's another day, it's Monday night. Because this is a pass-through hole, it's bigger than it needs to be, you know. Um, and so is that one. This is the one we're clamping through. Obviously that would only have one clamping point and it could turn a little bit. That's what I'm thinking. Now, you don't want that happening when you're got your feet on the foot peg so what i'm thinking is that well i've done it actually i'm, I'm drilling and tapping uh tapping into this uh, an m6 so we're going to pass through an m6 and i've uh, drilled this out five mil that's a pass through hole at 6.5 which is plenty i've just got to um deburr that um, I've done the other one as well. I've also tapped the other side, but I thought I remembered I've got a snazzy tool that I've had for a few years now and I've not used it. So once I've got all this chicken fat off, that's, uh, hey there. Once I've got all this chicken fat off that you get when you buy these things, I don't know why they bloody do this. It's the Chinese, isn't it? It's the Chinese, isn't it? Um, so I'm going to try it on this. So what it is, a two-part thing, you get that, which is the guide, and it's flat on the bottom, and it's notched if you're doing um, tube. So you can pop that on a piece of tube, and it'll sit there nice and happy. Uh, so first, as far as I know it, how it works, I, I've lost the instructions, I'm sure. I don't even know whether, whether there were any. I don't think there was, actually, because this was all in a bag. But if you see carefully, I'll just drop the tap in the hole, just to start it off. I think this is a number one tap. Yeah, because that's a number two. So, yeah, we'll just give it a bit of a lubrication, as you always do. Right. Nice bit of lubrication. Drop the tap over the hole. Drop that guide down so it's flat on the surface. And this, now, if you don't rock it about too much, should be 90 degrees in. In and straight. Shouldn't it? Eh? Eh? Well, let's have a look. Let's find out. Uh, right, so I, so I suppose we just press down on this out a bit and just keep turning around. Right, so you can't lift it up because you've got the T-bar. In fact, if I took that out, does that come out? No. That would be handy if that came out because then you could slide the sleeve up and have a look, but no, you can't. So you have to unwind it, still holding this square on the surface, otherwise you'll start damaging the threads on the way out. But anyway, we're out. That was nice straight extraction as well. Thread looks lovely. So if you wind that in, see it tightening up, that'll tighten up on your tap. Right, um, yeah, back again. I'm still here, I'm still here, I'm still in the shed, still buggering about. Um, right, so the plan, the the problem was that with the the old engine stud that goes through the, 
through the engine casings and everything and and affixes this shoe to the engine um we're left wanting really on thread i mean there's there's that much protruding out one side it's not enough to get a nut on each one really so what we've got to do is make a longer one of these now luckily enough i've got some um eight mil um rod left from the brake rod that i made you know and i tapped that out right that's 26 there right so we're going to thread it to there no we're not we're going to thread it to there that's right yeah, no point threading it there where it's passed through. Uh, so that's that. And then 26 from there is that far. That's where we're cutting it off. And the thread needs to go to there. Or well, a little bit further, it doesn't matter. Something I made a while ago. You've probably seen me use this. It's a chance to use it again. The homemade tapping guide. So, uh, yeah, I made that probably a couple of years ago now when we started this build. I wanted something to make sure I could tap that brake rod straight, you know, because the first time I tried it, I buggered it up, as usual. So I thought I'd make a tool just to make sure it goes down straight. And this, what, what happens here is, if you haven't seen it before, you put the rod in the bottom if it fits, probably it's going to be once once uh, once trimming, once deburring. Right there we go. Look, put that in there, and see see how it come come through there. Look, 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 look. Then let's try again. how much stick out we've got right so that's bottomed out on there you can just see in the top there where the where the, the rod is there we go nice shot of that lights on that so we need to come through that distance in a little bit and that will be near enough for our gang as we say here in Leicestershire It just mean be being a wuss. Right. I think we've got enough. Right, there we go, that's that. So I thread on both ends. Yeah, not goes on that far. Washer. And that's right up against the, the hilt. So at that, that is spot on. <coughs> that's the power box we've got to fit to the bottom of this. So it's out in the uh, atmosphere, keeping cool. I found a bit of matting on the floor that I was using, um, but I found a better use for it now. So we're gonna chop it up. It's only going in the bottom of this battery box so that uh, the battery's not sat on something hard and sharp, you know, like the bolt nut heads and screw heads and stuff. So hopefully the side we want is Kind of like the reverse of that, isn't it, really? But get a ruler, we've got a metal ruler. Oh, 
or a steel rule, as some people like to call them. Cuts nice, this stuff. Yeah, liking that. They come back on the floor. Right, that's that. And the inside of this one. Sure, that's rubbish. All right, so there we have that. Right, so I reckon if we just, uh, if I heat this up and sink that in as far as the thread, that should be about right. I have transferred the holes from the other side just to make sure it's right. So this is the side we're punching in. Uh, and that's the, that was the punching side. I'm sure I'm right, hope so. straight through because that's for the grommet now now we need the fixings right, what we're looking at maybe maybe that one right I think we've got it that's good nice one so we need the wiring Going through there. Pull that through. Thumb one in it. There we go. We're through. There we go. Just start to do that. Up. Oh, lovely length that is. That should fit in there nicely. Hang on, it goes the other way up, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Get the wires in there. Slot. Oh, nice. There you go. Can you see that? Hold on, hold on. Let me get the screen on. They are, can you see that? All oh, nicely put away in there. So there we go, then we've got the battery in. Uh, that fits lovely. Plenty of room for the wiring at the back. Perfect. So for now, that's it then from the, uh, from the shed. And I'll see you next time. Take care now, bye bye.